Hi, my name's Ruth Larkin and I'm here with EckhartYoga.com. Today I'm going to show you three simple moves for when you have back pain. Now when I'm not teaching Pilates, I'm also a sports massage therapist. So I deal with lots of people with all different types of pain. Personally, I also have an inflammatory arthritic condition that affects my pelvis and my spine. It gives me a lot of pain and I do find that movement is the best medicine. So if you are suffering from back pain, if you have in the past, or if you're looking just to do something that's a preventative measure, 90% of the population will have some back issues at some time in our lives. So this will be a really good place to start. Just as a little caveat, there are some things that you should watch out for. So most of the time, we don't need to worry. Suddenly, if we've got a spasm in the back and we don't feel like we can move normally. A lot of the time, we can deal with it ourselves and it's no cause to panic. However, I do want to point out that if you have permanent numbness in a hand, a foot, any point down your leg, if you lose any control of your bowel or bladder, then you do need to seek medical attention straight away. If none of that is a problem and you're just dealing with some pain, some stiffness and some lack of function, of course, not panicking is the first thing that's gonna make you feel better. So it might be that we just need to use a few of these movements to get you feeling a little bit more confident to move more naturally and to take some of that discomfort away. So the first thing we're going to do is come to lie down onto your mat. I'm gonna do this nice and carefully by bringing my legs to the side and just rolling down sideways and then easing myself back round. Now, if you have pain in the joints at the back of your pelvis, often this turning movement is the real telltale sign. People often say to me that rolling over in bed is the real tricky part here. Now, if it does feel very sore to have the back of your pelvis just on the floor, you might like to take a folded blanket and just scooch it underneath your hips for a bit of extra padding. From here, we're just going to try to relax into the floor. Remember, your nervous system does a great job of telling you when something is going wrong in your body. However, it can overreact from time to time. If we think of your pain response like a fire alarm, it will go off when your house is burning down, but it can also go off when you're burning the toast. So sometimes we need to just relax in order to help calm those nerves and help decrease that pain response. So lying in this position, I've got my hands resting gently onto my hip bones just to help me connect with some deeper breaths Breathing into the lower belly, into the side ribs, rather than in the top of the chest, will really help you to relax. So let's relax the shoulders as we take some of those deep breaths. And just allow gravity to settle the spine down into the floor, hopefully getting a little bit of relaxation through the legs. We're gonna start the first of our moves now, and it's so simple. It's just a pelvic tilt forwards and then back. Now I'm trying to isolate the hips here. I'm tipping the pelvis forwards and then tipping it back, trying not to move the rest of my spine too much. Now if this does feel a little bit creaky, if this does feel a little bit sore, all we're gonna do is take things slowly Notice how it feels. And as I say, if you're doing this when you have some pain, or if you're doing it perhaps first thing in the morning to prevent yourself from feeling stiff as the day goes on, it works equally well. Now we're going to do these pelvic tilts just till they feel like they're a little bit easier. So we're stretching gently the muscles at the lower back and opening the front of the hips. And then we're gonna to start to engage the tummy muscles. So of course, we want our abdominals to support the spine. So as we tilt the pelvis away, we're going to relax. And as we tilt the pelvis towards ourselves, we're gonna scoop up through the pelvic floor, squish the belly button down and engage those core muscles. 
Keep going, release as you breathe out and tilt away. Breathe in and tighten those muscles. Couple more times, breathing out and in to contract and out to release. Now, after we've done a few of these tilts, everything may be feeling a little bit more comfortable already. I really hope so. So let's go on to exercise number two. Again, really simple. We're going to bring the legs together, connecting through the ankles, the knees, and the inside thighs. Bringing the hands out of the way, the knees just rock over to one side. Now I'm being really careful to control this movement. My shoulder blades stay glued to the floor. As I take an inhale, I squeeze the tummy and roll the hips back to their start position. Over to the other side, exhale. So I'm rotating through my spine, inhale back, but I'm not overstretching. I'm just getting a little bit of oil in those joints. Sometimes it's the rotational position that can make us feel sort of extra stuck. So again, you're going to do as many of these as you feel are helpful. If it feels nice, you can continue, of course, coming all the way back. Lovely. Now the third movement I'm going to show you is my version of a cat stretch. So I'm gonna come over onto my side again to just push up nice and carefully to come round onto all fours. Now at one point when my back was very bad, I couldn't lie on my back at all. That position just was not available because of the pain. But I realized I could come onto all fours. So this was a really good place for me to start with my rehab. So let's come over now. You might find that your folded blanket is helpful just for a bit of extra padding underneath your knees or your hands to make things a little more comfy. So we want to start from a neutral position, i.e. we're not trying to flatten out the spine. We're trying to create a neutral shape by lengthening that tailbone. I'm lifting up through my shoulders so I feel nice and stable in this position. Now you may have seen a cat stretch loads of times. If you've ever been to a yoga class, we do them lots and lots, moving from the middle of the body. So I want to take this idea, but break it down and ripple from the tailbone right the way through to the crown of my head, creating a sequential mobilization of my spine. We're gonna go with the breathing and again, make sure that nothing is too far. So breathe in. And as we breathe out, I'm contracting my tummy muscles and then tilting my pelvis underneath my body. Nothing else has moved through my spine. Then as I continue to squeeze my tummy muscles, my lower back arches, then my middle back arches, then the push comes through my arms into my shoulders and I tuck the chin under at the very last moment, creating this high arch shape. And then as you exhale, relax back to your neutral. Let's try that one again. Breathing in. Remember, keep your shoulders and your head still until the last possible moment. It's the muscles that contract first, so that pelvic floor kicks in. Then your glutes help to tuck the pelvis underneath. Your tummy is gonna squeeze up, up, up as you lengthen through the lower back. Keep going, keep pulling those tummy muscles up, keep arching in that ripple like a caterpillar coming all the way up through your shoulders, head under last, breathing in and breathing out all the way back. Very good. So those are my three go-to exercises for when I have any particular back pain. If you would like to join me, the full course on Pilates for back pain can be found over at eckheartyoga.com and there's a link below.